Welcome to Fall at the Scientific American Blog Network. I'm Karen Bondar, and here are some of the coolest blog posts from the network in September. Heading back to work or school after a long summer break, everyone is probably eager to make a very nice first impression. However, first impressions can sometimes get a little bit marred if we have pimples all over our face. In a very popular post on her blog, Absolutely Maybe, Hilda Bastain dispels some very commonly held myths about acne. Blackheads really shouldn't be such a big deal. Uh, if a pore clogs up with oil and the top of it's open to the air, then it can oxidise and turn black, and that happens to pretty much everybody. The problem is that we tend to have uh, a lot of disgust about our body products, and for some reason that's especially so about blackheads and pimples. This could be because many people have believed for a long time, and still do, that blackheads are caused by dirt, and so they see it as a problem of poor hygiene. And if you see it that way, you could scrub away your skin, you could damage it, and that can increase the infection and inflammation that's associated with acne. Perhaps even worse is the fact that there's actually quite a lot of stigma associated with facial blemishes. We've got a really big industry that's making hundreds of millions of dollars every year, making us feel bad about our skin, deepening the myths about our skin, and then selling us products that are supposed to make us feel better. Maybe if we all knew a little bit more about our skin, uh, this wouldn't happen quite so much. And maybe we could stop being so superficial about each other. The network welcomed the Food Matters blog this month, and Kevin Bonham provided some insights on the benefits of being dirty. Several decades ago, scientists noticed kind of a weird trend. Namely, that people from developed countries tended to have more allergies and autoimmune disorders than people from developing nations. And we now have a fancy term for it, the hygiene hypothesis, because people in developed countries have better hygiene, are cleaner, more sterile, and therefore are less exposed to microbes. On my post this month for the new Food Matters blog, I describe some of the implications of this hypothesis for the food that we eat, whether it comes from farms or from grocery stores. Food fresh from the farm still has a lot of dirt and the microbes that are associated with that dirt attached to it, and these can get into our digestive tract and help regulate our immune system, whereas food from grocery stores is cleaned a lot more thoroughly and may be lacking these microbes. What? Sometimes the most popular posts on the network come out of a spoof or a joke of some kind, and that was the case this month on Roots of Unity. Evelyn Lamb explains why trigonometry <laughs> became one of the most important topics of September. A few weeks ago, The Onion ran a fictional article about 27 new trig functions the nation's math teachers had made up, probably to torture us with. After reading it, I discovered that there really are 10 trig functions that used to be common, but have mostly been forgotten now. In addition to your garden variety sine, cosine, and tangent, you have your versine, your haversine, your coversine, your vercosine, and so on. So what's the deal? Are math teachers trying to keep us in the dark about something? Well, before we had powerful calculating machines at our fingertips, multiplication was a lot more time-consuming and error-prone than it is now. It sounds kind of odd now, but haversines were important in navigation in the pre-calculator age. When you're trying to cross an ocean safely, everything you can do to make your computations more accurate is important. I was delighted that so many people enjoyed my post about all these secret trig functions. A few of them, mostly people who work with maps, told me that they still use haversines in their work. To think I never would have known about them without the onion. Well, there you have it, the best of the blogs for the month of September. I will see you again in October with more cool science stories from the Scientific American Blog Network.